Good morning. Good morning or good afternoon to all attendees and speakers to today's ICSD plenary session, which is on regenerative agriculture for the SDGs, leveraging ICT to improve sustainable agricultural development. My name is Uli Keita. I'm the executive director of Youth Connect Africa, and I'll be your moderator for today's session. At the margin of the UN General Assembly and International Conference on Sustainable Development, ICSD, Millennium Promise Alliance would like to showcase organizations that specialize in sustainable regenerative agriculture initiatives. These organizations provide solutions to development challenges and support in the acceleration of the achievement of the sustainable development goals, especially those that are at the intersections of SDGs 2, 4, 8, 11, 12, and SDG 13, through financing, strategizing, and deploying targeted interventions. The panel will feature projects and innovations which provide sustainable agricultural methodology and provide an opportunity to mobilize continued action to achieve the SDGs through cross-cutting strategies. Our plenary session will showcase sustainable and regenerative agriculture activities in developing countries that leverage ICT and leading edge approaches to grow nutritious food, promote improved agronomic techniques, maintain health of our planet, and sustain livelihoods of our communities. Our panelists and their organizations provide solutions to development challenges and support in the acceleration of the achievement of the above mentioned sustainable development goals. As we all know, across Africa and beyond, Agriculture is a primary source of income, and the majority of households consume locally produced foods. Yet, all too often, however, the way food is produced, distributed, and consumed is at odds with the natural capital and renewable and non renewable natural resources on which people, the environment, and wildlife depend. Farming practices and food security have also exacerbated the societal impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. As we began the process of rebuilding, we must seize this opportunity to assess our land usage, evaluate farming practices, and re-envision value chains, as well as pursue agricultural food systems that encompass the betterment of people and the environment at their core. Today's session objectives are threefold. The first one is showcasing sustainable agriculture interventions in developing countries. The second one will highlight agriculture innovation which benefit the environment, increase yield, and also improve agribusiness. And the third one will highlight the impact of teleagric to enhance farming practices and strengthen extension services. So to get us all started, our distinguished speakers for today's session include four eminent personalities, each in their domains. Our first speaker today will be Mr. Lassen Enali. Mr. Lassen Enali is a senior vice president of West Africa for OCP. He joined the group in, two, in September 2017 and served since March 2018 as a senior vice VP for OCP Africa in charge of the West African region. He has a bachelor's in civil works, a master in rural engineering, engineering and executive MBA. He has 37 years of professional experience, including 19 with the African Development Bank and 18 years in the public-private sectors. With the African Development Bank from 1998 to 2017, he was holding several managerial positions, which include six years as the bank's resident representative in Mali and in Gabon, 
as well as advisor of the operations vice president in charge of agriculture, water supply, sanitation, human development, governance, and natural resources. He's done this from 2014 to 2017. So Mr. Lassen, please, you have the floor to entertain us. Thank you. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I want just to say for the ones who don't know, uh, thank you, Oli, and thank you for inviting us to that uh, conference. I want just to, for those who doesn't know OCP, OCP is uh, the group OCP is founded in uh, 1920. We now have, uh, I mean, 100 years, we celebrated our century of existence. And uh, we know OCP founded in 1921 to mine phosphate in Morocco. But now our operation span to entire cycle of plant nutrition and the food system. We are aware, of course, of the role that digital, the digitalization can play as a, a lever and uh, as also factor that can not only enhance our efficiency, but also to help, I mean, boost the agricultural transformation. I want just to give you some, I mean, uh, uh, achievement of some decision that has been made by OCP Group to move that toward work. The, the digitalization is really one of the pillars of, of our group during this uh, last uh, 10 years of its transformation. Uh, we have launched one initiative that called Movement. OCP put an emphasis on diversity, flexibility, agility, and autonomy. And that movement is the expression of that emphasis, a new way of working and organizing our company, empowering individuals and groups from different backgrounds to experiment, initiate new projects, innovation. And this bottom idea generation has helped to the creation of no business like smart, smart fertilizer or agri aging. Just that movement that brings some lot of idea and most of them has been in the in the, in the in the in the domain of, uh, of digitalization we have uh, put in place gb with abm uh, is one of our strategic partner uh, so you can understand that uh, our really our really putting all the, the the means and all what we can do to make sure that we are really in that weave and that we are really uh, we can really have all the capabilities that we need to improve our, <clears throat> our efficiency. Uh, we you know also, or the ones who knows that OCP is incubating an university, University Mohammed Polytechnic. And this, of course, university is focusing on innovation and digitalization. It is, I can say that uh, Polytechnic is connecting with African University to promote sharing experience, feedback, and effort neutralization on common problematics. OCP via University is also supporting the startup ecosystem via its program Impulse. I will present it later. It is an African startup incubator dedicated to innovative startup in the fields of agri-tech, biotech, mining technology, material science, and nanotechnology. And the last, uh, just my son, is the digital. OCP has created a whole new executive direction, the digital office, to better prepare our company to the future, with an up in house capability, a new area of expertise like data scientists. Uh, I want to give you some examples of uh, what OCP Africa programs uh, in the domain of digitalization. OCP Africa, of course, is aware of the challenges of the digitalization of African agriculture and is doubly committed to facilitating, facilitating access to it for as many actors as possible. On the one hand, the subsidiary of OCP Group developed digital solutions to bring value to the farmers directly. There's some examples that I, I will share with you. The first one is the soil mapping. Well, you know that uh, we are really putting a great emphasis on that factor because if we don't really master that factor, we should to soil to make sure that we will use it efficiently and 
also who will preserve it. So you can guess, I mean, the negative impacts that will have on, on, on the agricultural transformation. So the digital soil fertility mapping approach is one of the avenues selected by OCP Africa to achieve its ambition goal for supporting millions of small hardware farmers across the continent. Digital soil fertilizer mapping represents the creation of spatial soil information system using field file and laboratory observational method coupled with special and no spatial soil inference systems. OCP Africa digital soil fertility mapping methods are used to estimate the spatial distribution of soil property and can be employed at various scales and have proven valuable for developing more quantitative, more accurate, and more precise soil maps. From 2016 to 22, more than 25 million hectares of agricultural land have been character, 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 characterized. And while using this, this approach, this uh, digital soil mapping, and 11 new fertilizer formula, formulation have been developed and 20 order are being tested because we are using the soil mapping, of course, to develop the formula, the customized formula that are adapted, that are customized, uh, adapted to the soil, to plant the, the sites, the ecology, to make sure to increase the efficiency and also, and also to increase the productivity. Uh, another initiative that I want to share you is also Lab, OCP Africa have launched its innovative OCP school lab, which provides mobile soil testing lab services to rural smallholder farmers in real time to help them understand their soil needs and also a recommendation based on the soil test report. The testing is done are made, I mean, uh, uh, in the plant, in the, in the, in the farmers' uh, lots, and everything has been shared it with the farmers. Uh, it consists of traveling school mobile laboratories from village to village to provide not only the soil testing results, but also to provide them the training on, on the best agricultural practices. So that program, so far the program has reached, has reached the 420,000 small hardware farmers in nine countries. We also developed a digital platform that we call Odongo because it has been, the pilot has been developed in Nigeria in 2019 that uh, promotes the agricultural value chain to various services while placing the farm at the head of the system. The digital solution allows farmers to access the agricultural input market and local support through the Agri-Extension Agent Network. Odongo offers educational and practical content on best practices and specific advice and recommendation of the farmer. And this initiative will be developed in the group strategic presence company while integrating new services. We plan to move now to use that platform to extend that platform to Ghana and to Senegal. Uh, women in AgriBooster, AgriBooster is a global offer that provide solution to the farmers related to major constraints they are facing, like access to finance, access to inputs, access to education, and access also to the market. And in that experience related to women in, uh, in agriculture has been launched in Ghana, and uh, it benefited to 5,000 women farmers. And uh, within the context of uh, COVID, we have been able with MPI and thanks to Chief Nat, who is here with his leadership, we have been able to, I mean, to provide the virtual training to, to the 5,000 uh, farmers. <clears throat> it's just an example, an example because AgriBooster, we don't use to use digital training, but within that context, so was really the solution that we have found to leverage on ICT to continue to win training even in the context of COVID. Uh, I, I, I discussed about, I give you the example of Impulse Startup Accelerator Program that has been launched with the University 
Polytechnic Mathematics with this challenge and uh, with, with the support of OCP Group. It was 12 week program that targets innovative startup in various scientific and industrial fields such as agri-tech, biotech, mining technology, and uh, material science. Uh, Impulse aims to support the rapid growth of this startup and forge fruitful and lasting links with OCP Group, Mohammed V Polytechnic University, and all our ecosystem. Uh, the platform creates crossroads between several players in an ecosystem working together to provide startup with access to different resources to build their business, training, workshop, fab labs, living labs, incubation, and acceleration program. And one of the startup has been also the service of uh, one of the startup has been involved with of one of agri booster in, uh, in, uh, in Ghana, especially even that woman agri booster to provide the mechanization services to the farmers. It, uh, we have a platform in the, they give access to all the, the tractors available in, in the region. So it links the, the farmers to, to the mechanization service providers. And it has been used, it has really, and not only it give access to the mechanization, but it's also, it give access, access to an affordable mechanization in terms of the price. So I will leave it here. And uh, I just, uh, I mean, for the sake of the time, I don't want to go through all the other initiatives we are working on our program in the next year. But we believe that the ACT is really, I mean, uh, an excellent, I mean, lever. And we cannot continue, we cannot, I mean, uh, achieve our strategy, our ambitions, I mean, targets without leveraging on ACT. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Lassen. You have touched on the digitalization of, of agriculture through the work that you are doing with OCP, which is very useful using the capabilities of the new technologies. You underscored the importance of universities, the roles of university in this digitalization of agriculture is key. Um, it brings lots, lots of uh, value addition to the farmers and to communities. Um, you've talked about the technology on soil mapping, which is uh, functioning in nine countries, uh, helping many, many farmers um, in having access to the digital solution so that they can improve uh, the way they do business. Um, you've talked about um, the new technology you're developing in Nigeria, which will be scaled to Ghana and Senegal, as well as the 5,000 women farmers who have actually benefited from this new technology that you're developing. So thank you very much, Mr. Lassen, for touching on those things. I want to remind all the speakers that you please have 10 minutes because we would like to have more time for question and answers. So our second speaker is Mr. Momodou Lamin Sisse. Uh, Mr. Sisse is the Global Lead Rural Development Specialist at the Islamic Development Bank. He has more than 35 years of work experience in various agencies, including eight years of working with UNDP as UNB Program Officer in Angola, Yemen, and East, uh, East Timor, respectively. From March 2008 to November 2010, he served as the operations manager with the Gambian Women Finance Association, GAFWA. He is a holder of master's degree in rural development management from the University of Khan Kane in Thailand. He holds an advanced diploma in modern management and administration from Cambridge International Institute in the United Kingdom and a bachelor's degree in Integrated Rural Development Pan-African Institute for Development, West Africa, from the Republic of Cameroon. Mr. Misisi, please, you have the floor for the second intervention. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Oli, and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come. I just want to quickly share my screen. 
if you um let me just do this quick i'm not quite sure i do um, just one minute bear with me all right I'm not sure if you are seeing my screen. Yes, we see it. Okay, great. Uh, thank you all once again. And uh, this is just a brief presentation from me from the perspective of Islamic Development Bank on uh, sustainable, uh, sustainable agriculture and the uh, use of ICT. Um, first of all, I think our partnership with the uh, Millennium Promise Alliance goes a long way uh, since 2011, if I can be precise. And uh, during this period, we have various interventions in different aspects of uh, uh, agricultural rural development. Uh, and this has covered uh, our member countries, mainly in Sub-Saharan Africa, and even part of uh, the uh, GCCI countries, including uh, Kyrgyzstan. Uh, but uh, what I just want to focus on now is what is a productive, uh, sustainable agriculture. Uh, sustainable agriculture, I would definitely, uh, we would define it as, given the working definition is agriculture that is productive, that produces high yield, and that is diversified. So uh, when, when you look at the, the screen here, we say, what is sustainable agriculture? In terms used for that, including generative agriculture, low input, eco and organic agriculture. And this can be categorized in three main goals. One, it has to be environmentally healthy. Two, it has to be economically profitable. And three, it has to be socially and economical, economically equitable. Uh, again, in sustainable agriculture, we need to put focus on the ecosystem the interaction between energy, environment, and the living organisms. These are very, very key in sustainable agriculture. The agro ecosystem, an ecosystem that is managed to produce food and fibers. And then the food system, a system that produces, processed, and distribute and consume food. All this is geared towards sustainable agriculture, an integrated system of plants and animal products production practice that will definitely save, uh, that will have the safety, and I mean, human, there will be safety for human and food for fiber needs, enhance environmental quality, make the most efficient use of renewable and I mean, renewable resources, sustain economically viable and enhance quality of life. Uh, moving towards sustainable agriculture, uh, we, as, I, as I gave in my introduction, it has to be productive. It has to be highly productive for that matter, and it should be diversified. Now, um, when we look at this, we need to take sustainable agriculture into account in the context, um, in the context of fragility it is so important to IDB member countries, considering that more than 65% of our population live in rural areas. When I say our population, I mean the 57 member countries of IDB. And more than 70% of the poor in those countries live in rural areas. Agriculture and agro-processing therefore accounts for 30 to 60% of their GDP and even at light share of the employment. We also know that despite the fact that there is rapid urbanization there is still more than 50% of the poor who live in rural areas. Uh, and they would be, by, that would be by 20 to 35, and depending significantly on agriculture. There is no doubt about that. Therefore, sustainable development principles has to be into consideration that is correct and inappropriate use of the resources by using that all environmental services are correctly valued 
to establish projects and policies on appropriate levels, committing national, regional, and global, generally with corresponding, uh, corresponding implementation vices, finance, and financing mechanisms. Incorporate institutional development and new technologies. It has to reduce risk and vulnerabilities of farmers, uh, of farming communities, diversify cropping system for economic and environmental resilience, weather forecasting to aid planting date and management decisions, uh, and that of the weather and price cropping insurances. Now, uh, our strategy for sustainable interventions in our member countries at both global and regional levels includes the development of global guidance to the development of an agriculture and rural development policy. To make sure that you are effective in agriculture, there must be a defined policy that an institution must work through if it is to better serve its member countries. So this is why in IDP, our first and foremost step to do is to ensure that that policy is in place. A develop, a development of a policy tool to strengthen the food security and nutrition, contributing to maximize rural development outcomes by operationalizing linkages between fragility and nutritional resources and resource management interventions. There should be an evidence-based policy, high priority to development of, uh, of solid evidence to guide policy advice and, pragmat uh, and pragmatic support. Strong partnership, with lead actors in agriculture development using value chain approaches. We cannot continue agriculture on the rudimentary style. We cannot continue on agriculture without traditional style. Therefore, agriculture value chain is a necessity if agriculture must, be, must grow in Africa particularly, and if it, if it is to serve our member countries. We have to increase awareness of resilience, linkages in global and regional levels. These are very, very important to uh, agriculture, sustainable agriculture. Uh, as I said before, uh, in IDP, we have sustainable agriculture advisors, framework of agriculture and rural development sector strategies. And this strategy, just to summarize, we have the objectives, we have the pillars, we have the guiding principles. I don't want to go through all this, but we can always make this uh, strategy, uh, agriculture policy available to any interested partner. Now, uh, examples of some of these interventions, when we look at it, we have uh, our interventions in Uganda, we have our interventions in Mozambique, we have our interventions in Mali, where ICT innovation in agriculture has been used. Uh, and these are technology generation to fill the gap and a technology dis dissemination. Uh, information needs for our farmers. Uh, when we talk about ICT, definitely we need to make sure that the farmers have filled that information gap, starting from pro-sowing, pre-harvest, uh, post-harvest, and market information. It is only through the application of ICT that this can be used. And I, I mean, as I'm speaking, those of our colleagues who are from the MPA, they definitely understand this. They, uh, we really uh, recognize and appreciate their intervention in some of our uh, main flagship programs like the Millennium Village, uh, Village Program, uh, which is now transforming to sustainable uh, uh, development programs, uh, and also the, our sustainable village programs, whereby the MVP have been using the use of ICT to ensure that our baseline surveys are properly conducted and then farmers have been identified and recognized regardless to their location in those communities. Um, again, ICT use in sustainable agriculture, we are talking about the, though the farmers have grown uh, the same crops and con uh, for countries, the ever changing weather conditions, soil fertility, pest and disease, et cetera, affects the final outcomes. MC, our member country farmers need reliable agriculture, information and alternative marketing channels. Information technology can bring an overall quality improvement. Uh, information and communication technology permits exchange and collection of data through interaction and transmission. The latest and most promising 
area of ICT is cloud computing. A digital initiatives also undertakes to reach the farmers directly. So uh, these are some of the various areas that I have here. I don't need to go much on them. Uh, hence, this presentation is available to you at any time. But these are some of the things I just wanted to highlight here. And as I said, uh, we have examples of these interventions. I mentioned Senegal, I mentioned Mali, I mentioned uh, um, uh, Uganda, where this ICT, the use of ICT has definitely been used to empower our member countries uh, to scale up. The, in Uganda, because of the success of MVP phase two, the government has scaled up the program uh, to another phase, whereby instead of the initial two districts, this time around 17 districts have been involved. And these are based on the success of the Millennium uh, Village program that have been implemented in the Western region of Uganda. And uh, the ICT has been used whereby farmers have been connected to Sukus with the help of the uh, Uganda Microfinance Support Center. Uh, I mean, these are some of the examples we could give. And uh, undoubtedly the dry land program was part of that also, which has been also implemented in Uganda, uh, Djibouti, and Somalia for that matter. On this note, I wish to thank you so much because of the time factor, but I really appreciate and thank you for your attention. Salaamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Over to you. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Mr. Sise. Um, You have defined sustainable agriculture as environmental healthy economic profitable and must have social and economic equity. Very, very important. Um, you've mentioned that it's critical for farmers to have the information needed real time to enable them to really leverage on ICT and new technologies make this possible and IDB is doing a great job at this. Thank you. Now we're going to our third speaker, our very own Chief Nat. Um, Chief, Nat, Chief Nathaniel uh, Sarko is commonly known as, as Chief Nat. He is the Executive Director of Millennium Promise Alliance. He is a fellow of the American Academy of Project Management, AAPM. He holds masters in project management, MPM, MBA, PH, MCH, BFA, DIP, and TEC. He's the chief advisor to the UN Youth Ghana and the president of the Coffee Federation of Ghana. Chief Nat has over 17 years of practical field experience as community health and development communication expert with various managerial positions at the national, regional, district and community levels in Ghana. As a communications and sustainable project concept designer, Chief Nat has been a social development consultant to Morehouse College, Atlanta, Georgia, in the US, and has demonstrated high level of commitment in his career. His rich experience has earned him deep involvement with ministries of health, employment, education, gender, local government in the Ghana, over the years. He has worked directly and indirectly with five successive sector ministry of health in Ghana over the years. Chief Nat's ex extensive knowledge and practical experience is in parallel. His understanding of social cultural dynamics in Ghana, great negotiation and lobbying skills paired with his project implementation skills is verified by his new dual position as the executive director for MPA and country director of the 1 million community health workers campaign. He's also the advisory um, on the Ghana, on the, in terms of uh, Ghana as a country to Professor uh, Jeffrey Sachs, the special advisor to the UN Secretary General on SDGs. So please, I give the floor to Chief Nat for his intervention. Thank you very much, Uli, and uh, thank you once again to um, our very good friends and partners in development from uh, ISDB, Mamoudou Lamin, and uh, also my very good friend, Lassen, and to our wonderful participants 
all over the world. And to ICSD, our partners, SDSN, and to your good self, Oli, for your wonderful support and family ties with um, us and our other panelists. I think leveraging uh, um, on ICT to enhance and ensure that we have a very solid uh, development in the agriculture sector goes without saying. Looking at these pictures, as you can see, the degradation that is occurring on the continent is quite fast depleting almost everything that we stand for. And on that score, um, research has revealed that we, if we should continue on this tandem, then we'll be left with just about 60 years of farming as a continent. This is as a result of the fact that we generate, I mean, uh, the topsoil takes about 1,000 years. And so the degradation that is going on with the illegal mining and all kind of activities, as per Chris Arsenal's um, um, assertion, it means that we need to really sit up. And the courses include a chemical intensive farming, plowing, tailing approaches, deforestation, global warming, lack of communication between researchers and academia, as well as the farmers. And it is on this call that we have to be very frank with ourselves and admit the fact that there has been a strong um, communication gap between agricultural experts and farming as a practice. I say so because, I mean, likely uh, the literacy rate of the average uh, farmer is quite low. And um, as a continent in the sub-Saharan Africa, we know that, I mean, we have about just um, 692 uh, million hectares, out of which just about 25% of it is cultivated. 75 is lying fallow, simply because of our archaic approach to um, practicing this um, ag agriculture. And therefore, ICT is very important in this year. Farmers lack information on current farming practices, especially during the planting period, the harvesting and post-harvesting. And also, we know that inadequate information on crop diseases and how to manage it has been something that is really affecting uh, our farm practice as uh, a continent. We also see that insufficient information on the weather patterns and when to apply farm input is something that, I mean, is impeding our progress. And lack of information on the improvement of soil health, which determines the, I mean, um, animal health and um, crop health, human health, ecosystem health, and even the health of the economy is something that is lacking. Therefore, we see that there's a urgent need to create a bridge that can really help us to connect the information flow from academia and researchers to farmers. And that is what really led us into coming up with what we call the Teleagri Consultation Center. And Teleagri Consultation Center, I would want you to just listen to, uh, watch a very short video, just about two minutes of my time, after which I will conclude. Farming, undeniably, is one of the strongest pillars and important economic activity in Ghana. I have a cassava, kuku, and a pineapple farm. I cover a long distance before I get to my farm every day, and the road is very bad. I can't work better because of tiredness. I am almost 70 years. I have a cassava farm. I have really worked hard all my life as a farmer but there is no better market out there for my farm produce. Farmers require new technologies to be able to improve their yields and their income. All too often, most farmers are disadvantaged in a variety of ways. Poor road networking, poor road connectivity, poor advisory services, lack of access to ready market, among many other factors prevent these farmers from fulfilling their true potential. ICTs have an important role to play in this regard. Introducing the first ever teleagri consultation on the continent and at the center of the world Ghana, West Africa. Teleagric, 
leveraging on the communications revolution to bridge the agricultural information gap to transform the lives of hundreds of thousands of our farmers in Ghana is one of the greatest opportunities of our time. Telia Greg is an information and communication technology through video, voice, internet, geographic alert and information systems and mobile phones to connect smallholder farmers to agriculture researchers, best farming practices and a wider market in real time as well as to trade options at a click of a button. Telia Greg, leveraging ICT to transform small-scale resource-based livelihoods from subsistence activities into viable agribusinesses to improve farming practices in Ghana. For example, targeting 700,000 farmers throughout the country and using six major local languages, addressing SDG 1, No Poverty, Zero Hunger, Industry, Innovation and Infrastructure, Decent Work and Economic Growth, and with SDG 17 partnership is the best way to get this done. So what we, we, we start to do with the introduction of the teleagric was to ensure that there is a clear communication flow between the various sector players. That is the Ministry of Food and Agriculture, researchers, research institutions, um, academic institutions, and then to the farmers, through the extension agents to the farmers. And so the teleagric consultants are able to really communicate from the um, make sure that they share information from the respective players as have uh, shown to the farmers and vice versa and we do so by using the local language that the farmers do understand to ensure that we don't impede the communication uh, process now you can see here there are there are several players and each one trying to stand alone um, like the private sector, service providers, like um, the government sector, policy makers and all. So what we try to do is we create a communication link between these players on the left side and then the aggregators, the farmers, the unemployed youth, even the fishermen, the traders, livestock, the agricultural workforce, using what we call the ICT and in this case, the teleagric platform. So MPA bear this teleagric technology uh, to improve farming in Ghana, as it were. And we operate currently in about 16 regions of Ghana. And we have registered about over 110,000 cocoa, maize, rice, oil palm um, farmers. And for livestock farmers, we have over 62,000 of them subscribing to our teleagric platform. Now we receive several calls and uh, from the partnership between us and OCP, where we have the AgriBooster project. We saw that, I mean, we registered about 5,245 uh, farmers in six districts and eight community extension offices to ensure that we are able to bridge the communication gap. And as you can see on the screen, we received several calls coming through um, in the blue, the ones that come through and then the orange are the ones that goes out. So we don't only wait for the farmers to call, but we try to call them from the teleagric center to ensure that we communicate new farming practices to these uh, farmers on, on, on the field so that they feel at home and they feel obliged to also share their experiences with the center. And they are able to try out their call to agric experts who may not be at the center, but can be anywhere in the world it's just a matter of telephony, and that is the power of ICT. So um, the ICT, in order to ensure that it is sustainable, we believe that we need to partner with the educational system to strengthen our ties and to make sure that it is incorporated into the curriculum and taught in schools as to how best um, people who come out of the four walls of the school can see the need to interact with uh, the farmers who need uh, the information they have been schooled on and not let the research that they do gather dust on the shelves. And so we've been able to partner with um, major institutions in the country, universities, agri colleges, to ensure that uh, we create areas of collaboration such as research, 
um, academic model for students, student internship capacity building for the farmers, development of the tele-agri protocols for respective crops and their livestock, and then also to have these uh, students also participate in agri extension services to transfer the knowledge that they've acquired over the period of their education. In conclusion, we believe that the use of uh, technology in agriculture is very critical in our development, considering the fact that we have about 75 of arable land uncultivated, and the inclusion of um, in technology and mechanization can really help us to uh, meet up this particular challenge and be able to provide enough food to meet the SDGs 1, 2, and leverage on 9 to achieve this particular result. The adoption of ICT in developing countries can help better protect the environment and increase the crop yield and can also enhance businesses, agribusinesses. And we also believe that policymakers and international organizations should invest in developing such technologies for sustainable agriculture. I say this because, I mean, we initiated this uh, teleagric concept about um, um, four years ago. And uh, as we speak, the teleagric platform is able to do what we call the farmer's field school, where, as my good friend Lassen mentioned, in the difficult times of the COVID, we're able to virtually train these uh, 5,000 farmers to be able to advance and um, implement the, uh, I mean, um, farm um, techniques that has been um, advanced through the experts who couldn't travel as a result of the travel ban and all. But through telephony and through ICT, we were able to organize such. And it's, it was very good, and uh, they all benefited so well. Uh, they were all so happy, and uh, we were able to transcend all barriers to get them um, practicing and doing what they know best to feed us. Because, I mean, with COVID, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't eat. So there was a need for us to support the agri sector, and this ICT platform really helped us to do this. But we haven't had, we haven't seen a lot of investment in such areas, and it's very important that we take a critical look at it. We also believe that policymakers and international organizations should invest in developing the, the technology, like I said, and strengthen the capacity of small-scale farmers with the use of ICT. Some of them are not uh, too exposed, but when you look at the mobile penetration rate, it so justified itself that, yes, it goes without saying, that almost everybody is having either a phone or two. And it tells you that we should be able to leverage on this expertise and the opportunity to advance um, ICT to these farmers. We also see that key information needs of the disadvantaged groups, the small scale farmers, can be met and should be met through um, such a platform as the Teleagric platform. Thank you very much. And I'll be, I apologize once again for the sound. Um, uh, we're going to share the Teleagric. Uh, documentary for you to listen to. We uh, I appreciate the opportunity given. Thank you very much. And over to you, Julie. Thank you very much, Chief Nat. Um, you've talked about leveraging ICT in agriculture, which is key to sustainable development. And you've mentioned the critical area where we are, 60 years left of farming, if we continue the bad intensive farming practices that are actually going on. Um, we're not using our lands at full potential, you've said, and ICT will surely help us to ensure that we do it right. ICT bridge or will bridge the gap. I love that. I think uh, the Tola Agri platform that you've talked about um, in Ghana should be actually scaled up to many other African countries especially with the inclusive process that you've mentioned with all the stakeholders. You have government, uh, like the Ministry of Education, you have the private sector, and you have partners, the private sector, um, supporting uh, this effort. I think this is a really a unique and inclusive process that should be scaled to many other countries. And indeed, ICT can certainly move the dial in improving agricultural in a sustainable manner. So we are now moving to our fourth speaker. Uh, last but not least, Madame Safia Touba. 
Madam Safia Touba is the country director for the International Fund for Agriculture Development. Madam Ba is a national of Guinea and was appointed um, as IFAD country program officer in April, 2019. She joined IFAD and since she joined IFAD, she has demonstrated technical expertise and credibility in country portfolio management in Guinea. She contributed to maintaining the standards for IFAD's competence in development at the field level. In collaboration with other members of the UN country team, bilateral development agencies, NGOs, and country program counterparts, Madame Ba is working with her colleagues in West Africa to establish and maintain relationships and protect the image of IFAD as a credible, reliable partner striving for harmonization of development activities. Madame Ba oversees IFAD operations in the country through the implementation of the 120 million USD agricultural development project financed by IFAD. Along with the OPEC fund and the Arab Development Bank, the project Agri Farm aims to sustainably increase the revenues of rural households and build the resilience of external shocks. Prior to joining IFAD, Madame Ba was head of private banking for Bank of Dakar, Bank de Dakar in Senegal. Prior to this, she worked as operations associate at Capital Fund Management in Paris, France. Madame Ba um, has a master's degree in management control and business performance from ESCP, European Business School in Paris. Welcome, Madame Ba, and you have the floor. Thank you. Yes, um, thank you, Uli, for the presentation. Um, I'm going to share my screen um, for the presentation regarding IFAD's operations in, in Guinea. Um, so basically on this first um, slide, what I wanted to show was um, a quick uh, view of the country context and IFAD's, IFAD's portfolio in Guinea. Um, you should know that IFAD has a vision of inclusive and sustainable rural transformation. Uh, IFAD endeavors to improve and build livelihoods that are more resilient for the poor rural people with a strong focus on smallholder farmers, women, youth, and marginalized groups. In doing this, IFAD does not harm the natural resource base in the areas where IFAD operates. Um, today, we are going to focus on its operations in Guinea. Um, that is, Guinea is located in West Africa, and IFAD has been operating here for over 40 years now. We have closed successive, successfully um, 13 projects so far, and we have one um, ongoing project that Uli presented earlier uh, in her uh, presentation. Uh, I will now highlight IFAD's um, interventions through the ongoing project and the one that has closed um, recently. The first project is um, Family Farming, Resilience, and Market Projects in Upper and Middle Guinea, AgriFarm. Um, this is a, a $120 million development project co-financed by IFAD. The goal is to increase sustainably incomes of 78,000 family farms and their resilience to external shocks, including climate change and most recently the COVID-19 pandemic. AgriFarm also aims to improve nutrition, access to local markets, urban and regional markets in 15 localities of, um, of Guinea that are highlighted in green on the map on the top right hand side of my presentation. These regions are the most affected by food insecurity, and uh, we estimate that uh, uh, it offers um, great opportunities for export diversification since we neighbor with um, six uh, countries. The chart on the bottom right hand side of my presentation illustrates the marketing opportunities that are available uh, to beneficiaries of, the, of this project. As such, the intervention will rehabilitate approximately 850 kilometers of rural and national roads. The project will also target as many, as many IFAD projects throughout the member states. Uh, we mainly target young people and women as a priority. Um, for SDGs, SDGs one and two, this derives from IFAD, IFAD's goal to transform rural areas. And we have a wide experience in investing in smallholder farmers. Interventions will empower rural community 
management committees for better water management and ensure that infrastructures are sustainably managed. Um, you should know that due to the lack of storage facilities or road network, in a high post harvest loss, AgriFound will focus its activities on, on dedicated, with de dedicate its activities to train target groups, basic, basically women on food processing that, is, uh, that will cover um, vegetables and fruits. Interventions will also focus, focus on market infrastructure while we ensure that natural resource base is preserved. The project will plant a variety of trees to preserve um, from oil erosion in certain regions of, of Guinea. All needs are, have been streamlined and tailored, taking into account the beneficiaries' needs and aligned to the national uh, policies and strategies in Guinea. The project is part of the wide network. Uh, we connect farmers, um, we provide uh, market information, prices, and weather conditions to our beneficiaries. The project also uses an m and &E tool called La Ruche to collect data on target groups, products, their yields, and so on. And so there is still room to include ICT as to improve yields and market information. The second project that I would, wanted to highlight was, uh, this one has closed recently, is the project, a national program to support agricultural value chain actors uh, that operated in Lower Guinea and an, a region called Farana in Guinea. The project was designed as a program with a national scope. Uh, it's different extensions gradually, gradually um, covered Guinea. Um, the intervention was an innovation in Guinea actually and in all of IFAD's portfolio because the approach was based on financing agricultural producers association through their action plans. And we focused on rice and market, market gardening products, so basically fruits and vegetables value chains. The intervention aimed to respond to the needs of rural poor farmers in the target areas expressed through their unions. After the project closed, we had a positive impact on rural product poverty. Actually in that region where the project operated, poverty ratio decreased to 17, 47% against the 62% that we had initially targeted uh, at design. The project, the project had a satisfactory impact on food security as beneficiaries now ha have access to increased number of meals per day and a better quality. This also was another project that had basic, um, um, that focused on infrastructure, basically um, rehabilitating rural roads that enabled to link production areas to markets and facilitated market access as well as access to um, com uh, com um, local com uh, facilities, just as schools and health facilities. NAFA also covered, um, uh, uh, provided um, opportunities for rural management committees to, to uh, provide, um, to sustainably use the infrastructure and specifically um, the usage of store, storage and irrigation facilities and bridges. Uh, this program, NAFA, also contributed to human development, capital development of beneficiaries through improved knowledge and skills in the domain of agriculture, rural production processing, thus reducing post-harvest loss and providing nutritive um, food for the families that were targeted uh, in the hunger uh, season. The, 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 the project also enabled uh, storing and marketing facilities this increased better uh, water management, the use of improved uh, seed vari varieties, production and market techniques, as well as um, we provided also literacy trainings to uh, many of our beneficiaries, especially women um, that are not able to read and understand what they actually are, are doing. The project collaborated with um, rural community radio stations to disseminate information on how to use pesticides, give market prices and local um, um, uh, goods. I'm going to now sh share with you um, a short video about the last intervention of uh, IFAD in, in Guinea. <laughs> Guinea in West Africa is one of the poorest countries in the world. 
For the last 10 years, PANAFA, or the National Project to Support Value Chain Actors, has been working all across the country in an effort to unlock the nation's agricultural potential. If si we compare the uh, time avant, avant PANAFA in the region and at the moment of PANAFA in the region, things have completely changed. The project's interventions have ranged from grassroots training in farmer field schools and the capacity building of producer and processing groups to large-scale infrastructural investments, including the reclamation of abandoned plots, which have been provided with irrigation systems, the construction of new processing and storage facilities, and kilometres of rural roads and new bridges, which mean that isolated villages now for the first time have ready access to markets. Rural financial services have provided the foundation for much of the project's work. For the first time, many poor rural citizens can save and get access to credit that would otherwise be unavailable to them. PANAFA finally closed its activities in December 2019. Over its duration, the project has made significant improvements to infrastructure and helped to generate local empowerment through many of its grassroots community activities. Thank you for your time. Very much. Thank you very much, um, Tafiato. This was a very uh, nice presentation about the work of IFAD and the, the great initiatives that you are doing um, over 40 years um, in Guinea. And of course, as you've mentioned, ICT is being improved in Guinea by a tool called LaRouche, and as well as many other projects within the framework of the National Program to Support Agricultural Value Chain actors in the country. So thank you so much for that. Um, we are running out of time and I would like to give the floor to participants um, who are joining us virtually for a session of Q&A. Uh, Chief Nat, um, do we have, or Sam, do we have people um, posing questions in the chat or are we giving the floor to attendees? Okay, so I see that attendees have, um, are going to be submitting their questions through the chat. Do we yeah, have yes. questions? We do not have questions at this time, but if you are in the chat and you are a participant, please feel free to submit your question in the Q&A panel at the bottom of the screen. Yes. So if we have no questions at this time, um, as Sam said, please feel free to write to us and we will be sharing um, all of the, the presentations. And um, please also tweet and retweet. Um, I would like to ask before I thank our uh, speakers, I would like to ask everyone to please put your video on for 30 seconds so we can take a picture for the Twitter account. Sam and Shen, please turn your videos on for a few seconds. There we go. Thank you. Just taking a screenshot. Here we go. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you to all of our participants for this great presentation on regenerative agriculture for the SDGs, leveraging ICT to improve sustainable agricultural development across the continent. Until next time, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.